are our objectives for today? Well, at the, by the end of today's lesson, candidates should be able to explain the major elements of short stories, correctly write and punctuate dialogue in their stories, and share information with others about the various types of conflicts that can be developed in stories. All right, so we are going to pick up from yesterday's lesson. So yesterday we looked at this writing task, extended writing task from the stage three paper under the theme, The World of Music. And your task is to write a story about someone in the music industry. You have, you're allowed to use 300 to 400 words and this task values 35 marks, okay? You can think about a musician, can be fictional or real life. Think about what challenges the person has faced in his or her career. And think about how the person overcame those challenges. You must use at least one of the images below and include information from at least one of the source documents. So make sure that you always read all three of your source documents at stage three and all two at stage two. So here are the images again, but I know you're quite familiar with them. So you remember this instruction says you're to tick which image you are using in your story. So make sure you do that. We're going to do a little recap of the, some of the elements of the story, of story writing that we spoke about in yesterday's lesson. So we spoke about setting. Your story has to take place somewhere. All right? And we spoke about all the factors that you need to consider when you are thinking of your setting. And remember, the setting can change. All right. Characterization is very, very important. It's important that you spend time to develop your characters. And as I said yesterday, your characters don't even have to be human beings. All right. The plot is very, very important. So we talk about plot and structure. So usually we say that the plot is a series of events that make up the story. We want to make sure that we have some interesting events to make up our story so that our story is memorable. Right. People will always remember our story and enjoy or appreciate. Usually, our stories have conflicts, and there are different types of conflicts or problems, and we're going to go in detail today about some of those types of problems. And then we want to ensure that our stories are resolved. Make sure that we resolve our conflict by the end of the story. We spoke about a narrative point of view, and we're also going to do a little talk a little bit more about that today. We're going to talk about the writer's style. All of us have our own unique styles and we're also going to talk about theme in a little more detail than we did yesterday. So let's start with conflict. You look at this picture and you're thinking, wow, there seems to be some problem here, right? You could build a beautiful story by using this picture only. So we have different types of conflicts, and I'm sure that you can all relate to them. So the first one that we're going to talk about is man versus self. Yes, I can have an issue with me. I could be a part of the problem. So man versus self is the only true version of internal conflict you will find in literature. In this mode, the conflict takes place within the mind of the main character, and it often involves the character making a decision between right and wrong, or other mixed emotions. However, this struggle could also exist in the form of the character battling a mental illness. That's a reality. Then we have man versus man. This one is probably the most common form of external conflict, and it is also known as interpersonal conflict. The mode lies at the heart of all dramatic arts and places the struggle between the protagonists the main character and the antagonist, the opponent, otherwise known as the good guy versus the bad guy. In man versus man conflict, the protagonist wants something and the antagonist obstructs the protagonist from getting what he wants. So we see the struggle there coming out. Man can also have an issue with society. So this mode of external conflict occurs when the protagonist is placed at odds with a government or cultural tradition. This type of conflict applies to societal norms as well. For example, if a child gets in trouble with his parents for sneaking out of the house at night, he is in conflict with the societal tradition that children are expected to obey their parents. Then we can also have man versus nature conflict. Man versus nature pits the main character against the forces of nature in the form of a natural disaster or a similarly dangerous situation. 
and is often associated with literary naturalism, which hinges on the idea that nature is indifferent to humanity. Yes, we can have man versus machine, and especially in this era in which we live. Man versus machine can mean that a person is in direct combat with robots, yes, in the context of science fiction, or it could mean simply that technology stands in the way of the protagonist getting what she wants. In the science fiction version, the same attributes of, a man, of man versus man conflict apply. However, if a person struggles to keep a job that a new machine can do better, the physical struggle is against the machine, but the emotional struggle is against the society that breeds or creates the technology. And then we can have man versus fate or the supernatural. Right, And this exists in any story in which a protagonist is struggling. So the protagonist always seems to be in some sort of struggle. Is struggling against a god or gods. It is sometimes considered part of man versus self when it is focused on an internal moral struggle but should be considered separate in the context of epics in which the gods are present antagonists. All right, so those are some of the conflicts. So as you think about this story that you're going to write about your artist, think about which conflict would be more suitable for this activity. Now let us spend a little time to zoom in on the elements of the plot. This is where I believe you need to spend a lot of your time. Now, the plot has essentially five basic elements. We start with the exposition. At the beginning of the story, your characters, your setting, and your main conflict are typically introduced. And remember that you want to start your story in such an interesting way that people will want to continue to read. They will want to read to the very end. So make sure that you do all that you can to grab your reader's interest from the very beginning. Then we move to the rising action now. So your story is supposed to grow. Right? Almost like you're climbing a mountain. So the main character now is in crisis and the events leading up to the face in the conflict begin to unfold. So the story begins to get complicated. Yes, yeah, so one incident starts with one incident and then things get more complicated. We keep adding to that. Then we get now to the climax, which is the highest point of interest in your story. This is the part that people can't put down. So at the peak of the story, a major event, notice a major event occurs in which the main character or the protagonist faces a major enemy, fear, challenge, or other source of conflict. The most action, drama, change, and excitement occurs here. Just like when you're watching a movie, the most intense and exciting part of the movie, that is the part that we call the climax. Okay, so after we have gotten to that high, then we start to come down. So we have the falling action. So the story begins to slow down and work towards its end, tying up all the loose ends. And then we get to the resolution. And the resolution is like a concluding paragraph that resolves any remaining issues and ends the story. And your story should be so good that when people get to the resolution, they want more. The plot is very, very important. The plot is what makes a story a story. It, it gives the story character development, suspense, energy, and emotional release. It allows an author to develop themes, and most importantly, conflict that makes a story emotionally engaging, right? So you may cry, you may get angry, you may be extremely happy, any of those emotions. Everybody knows how hard it is to stop watching a movie before the conflict is resolved. Let's talk about narrative point of view. Who is going to be telling your story? The narrator is the person who is telling the story. Consider this question. Are the narrator and the main character the same? Is that what you want? All right, you have the freedom to decide. By point of view, we mean from whose eyes the story is being told. Who is telling the story? Are we going to use a child narrator, an adult, a male, a female, a first person, a third person? All of those things you need to consider. Short stories tend to be told through one character's point of view. And the following are some important questions to consider. Who is the narrator or speaker in the story? Does the author speak through the main character? Is the story written in the first person, the I point of view? So you're going to see the pronoun I a lot. And remember, you must always capitalize that pronoun. 
Is the story written in a detached third person, he or she point of view? Is the narrator telling somebody else's story? Is there an all-knowing third person who can reveal what all the characters are thinking and doing at all times and in all places? So this person behaves like God, all right? Is the narrator trustworthy? Can we trust the person who is telling the story? We move from point of view to talk about style. All of us have a different style, a style of doing everything, and that is what makes us unique. So the author's style has to do with his or her vocabulary, use of imagery, tone, or the feeling of the story. It has to do with the author's attitude to the sub towards the subject. In some short stories, the tone can be ironic, it can be humorous, it can be cold, or it can be dramatic. Every time I think about the story Bella makes life, I know it has a humorous tone. Is the author's writing full of figurative language? Can we identify metaphors and symbols and personification? What images are used? What pictures are painted with words? What is the tone or the mood of the story? All right, so all of those we have to consider. Then we go on now to talk about theme. The theme is built on a topic such as death, hope, resilience, and how the topic affects the human condition, society, or life. The theme should be expressed as a statement, a general observation about human nature. To help you write a thematic statement, consider the following. What is the story about? What is its general topic? In this case, it could be about hope and it could be about resilience, all right? Is it about money? Is it about wealth? Is it about death? Is it about talent? You decide. How is the topic revealed? Consider how the characters change. Consider the symbols and consider the, the climax, the highest point of interest in your story. Do you notice any patterns in imagery and diction? And diction has to do with word choice. And a word choice will come out as a result of our individual styles. Does the title have any significance? Does the narrator or character include any statement that reveals a theme or observation? So all of those are very, very important. So those are the basic elements of the short story. Now I'm going to give you some writing tips, all right? And I hope that you will find these quite beneficial. Now the first one, try to write in one sitting. So set aside some time to write the story from beginning to end. So write the first draft of your story in as short a time as possible. If you are writing a short story, try to write it one go, okay? Don't worry too much about plotting or outlining beforehand. You can do that once you know you have a story to tell in the first place. Your first draft is a discovery process. All right, so this is a starter for you. We're going to grow and advance. So remember that you can do the plotting once you know you have a story to tell. So make sure that you have an interesting story to tell. Second point, develop your protagonist, develop your main character. We don't just want a physical description, we want far more than that, all right? So stories are about protagonists, they're about the main character, right? And that is why we are so hurt when they die in the end or something unfortunate happens to them in the end. So stories are about protagonists. And if you don't have a good protagonist, you won't have a good story and that's just it. The essential ingredient for protagonists is that they must make decisions, just like we do every single day. Your protagonist must make a decision to get herself or himself into whatever problem he or she gets into in your story. And likewise, she or he must come to a crisis point and then decide to get herself or himself out of the problem. So my decision has put me in a problem, right? And I need to work my way out of that problem. Create suspense and drama. Keep us at the edge of our seats, all right? So to create suspense, set up a dramatic question. A dramatic question is something like, is he going to make it? Or is she going to get the breakthrough of her dreams? By putting your protagonist's faith in doubt, you will make the reader ask, what happens next? To do this well, you need to carefully restrict the flow of information to the reader. Nothing destroys drama like oversharing. The next tip, show, don't tell. Some of us love to tell. When something interesting happens in your story that changes the fate of your character, don't tell us about it. Please show the scene. Let us see it happen. 
Your readers have a right to see the best parts of the story play out in front of them. Show the interesting parts of your story and tell the rest. Write good dialogue. Allow your characters to speak. We can learn so much from the characters and what they have to say and also what other characters have to say about them. So good dialogue comes from two things. Please pay attention to this, right? Intimate knowledge of your characters and lots of rewriting. So how well do you know your characters? And you can write your characters based on people you know personally, right? With, yeah, personally, and even based on people you have watched in shows or people you have read about, okay? So good dialogue comes from two things, intimate knowledge of your characters and lots of rewriting, all right? So you're always going to be fine-tuning to make your work better. Each character must have a unique voice. There must be something distinct about me, something distinct about you, John Paul Sue. All right? And to make sure your characters all sound different, read each character's dialogue and ask yourself, does this sound like my character? If your answer is no, then you have some rewriting to do. Also, with your speaker tags, try to use more than the typical he said and she said. After a while, it gets boring, all right? So speaker tags like he exclaimed, she announced, and he spoke vehemently are more descriptive. Your first draft is your chance to explore your story and figure out what it's about. You may not like it, right? But guess what? You have opportunities to improve it or to change it if you so choose. All right, so let's concentrate on getting at least the first draft done. Your second draft isn't for polishing. We haven't reached that stage yet. Although many new writers will try to polish as soon as they can to clean up their embarrassing first draft, Instead, the second draft is meant for major structural changes and for clarifying the plot and the characters of your story. The third draft now is for deep polishing. Now is when everything starts to gel and this is the fun part. Then you want to share your work, share what you have written. You write better when you know that someone will soon be reading what you have written. If you write in the dark, no one will know if you aren't giving your writing everything that you have. But when you share your writing, you face a possibility of failure, and we don't like to fail, right? This will force you to write the best story that you possibly can because you know you have an audience. All right, so those are some tips for story writing, all right? How to write a good story. All the tips that I have given you will help you to write that good story or stories. The trick to writing a good story is to practice. And we say it all the time. Practice, practice, practice. Whatever you think of city and gills, English skills and math skills, think of practice, practice, practice. So the rewards will be great. When you finish the story you're writing, then you celebrate. And you can choose to celebrate with ice cream or your favorite cup of juice. Or by going out, you decide. Or by watching a movie. Or by reading a good story, another good story. Then you start your next one. There's no shortcut besides this. Just keep writing. Keep practicing. Now, dialogue plays an important part in our stories. Right? We want our characters to speak. Dialogue is a critical component to a great story. It doesn't mean that every story has to have dialogue because I've read good stories, great stories that do not have dialogue. But it's a critical component to a great story as it drives action. It reveals characters and it relays facts and information. We learn a lot when people talk. Writing realistic, compelling dialogue takes skill and it takes practice and so does punctuating it correctly. Dialogue has its own set of rules that can be tricky to keep straight. I'm going to share with you eight essential rules for punctuating dialogue correctly so that your story communicates clearly and it appears polished. So we're going to use a comma to introduce our text, to introduce what we want to say. When writing dialogue, place a comma, place a comma before your opening quote. There is, however, an exception to this rule. No comma is needed when you introduce text using a conjunction such as that or whether. She said, 
So we have the dialogue tag first with the she said and then we have the comma. So the comma is going to separate the dialogue tag from the direct speech. So the direct speech, it's all in the details and all of that is enclosed in quotation marks. The second one, he told me that, and I'm going to quote now, so because I'm going to quote the person's exact words, I'm going to put that in quotation marks as well. So the quote is, there are 1,008 different reasons to write. Those are not my exact words, so I put them in quotation marks. Use a comma when a dialogue, ta dialogue tag follows a quote. While your character may have just spoken a complete sentence, you may not need to end it with a full stop. When dialogue is followed by a tag, for example, he said, asked, or replied, then use a comma before the closing quote when you would normally use a full stop. If no tag follows the text, end the dialogue with punctuation to end the spoken sentence. This rule applies only to full stops or periods. You should not omit other punctuations that add meaning or clarity to the sentence, such as the exclamation point or the question mark. And I have two examples for you. The first one says, let go of your fares. So that's a direct speech. And notice it is followed by the comma, right? And then after the comma, we close the quotation and then we have the dialogue tag, he replied. Then, right from your heart, she stated. It's the best way to reach the readers. So we have two sentences here. So the first quotation, right from your heart. So we have the comma after heart to separate this quotation from the dialogue tag, she stated. And then the other quotation starts now. It's the best way to reach the reader. And we close with our full stop and our quotation marks. Full stops or period and commas fall within Yes, within the closing quotations. When closing a quotation, a period or a comma always falls within the quotation, not outside of it. All right? And look at the examples on the screen. All of these rules are starting to make sense. My sentence has ended at sense. So I have my full stop here and then my close quotation. All right? So the full stop is enclosed in the quotation. So it comes before the quotation mark. Second one. It's a matter of practice, right? So the quotation has ended, but the entire sentence has not ended. So I have my full, my comma here, quotation marks, finish now with my dialogue tag, and then I have my full stop. In the third one, she explained, and you have your comma. Now you, have, you started with the dialogue tag, so we have the comma next. You just need to understand each rule. I have my full stop, then my quotation marks. Question marks, exclamation points, and dashes fall inside or outside closing quotations, right? In dialogue, question marks, exclamation points, and dashes typically fall within closing quotation marks. However, it depends on the usage and the meaning. These punctuation marks may fall outside of the closing quotation mark in some cases, all right? So remember, there are always exceptions to rules. Look at these examples. Four, he shouted. Right? So that's the quotation. And it's an exclamation. So we have the exclamation mark and then the close, close quotation. So four, he shouted as he whacked the ball off the tee. All right? In the next one, congratulations to the man who has it all. That entire sentence is an exclamation. All right? But in my exclamation, I am quoting the man who has it all. So in this case, my exclama exclamation mark goes after the sentence and after the quotation marks. All right? So remember the exception. Then sometimes we have to use single quotes and double quotes together, or single quotation marks and double quotation marks together. This one is, can be problematic for some people, so pay attention. Use single quotes when using quotes within dialogue. So I am speaking, and in my speech, I'm going to quote what somebody has said. So you may write what I say and put it in double quotation marks, and the quote that I have used from somebody else, you would put that in single quotation marks, okay? So use a pair of single quote quotes nested within doubles to indicate quoted text within dialogue. Note that there is no added space in between the closing single and the double quotation marks. Look at our example. So the entire quoted sentence is, when doling out desserts, my grandmother always said, you may have a cookie for each hand. 
full stop, close the quotation. That's the entire quotation. But within that quotation, I am quoting something that grandmother always says. So I put what grandmother always says in single quotation. So right before you and right after the full stop. And then I have the close, the double quotation marks. All right. So it's a quote within a quote. Second one, he said, I have heard that this one is the, I've heard that this I've heard that this one is a phone for the next generation, but I'm not sold out on it yet. So we have the entire quote from, I have heard right down to not sold on it yet. But within that quote, right, I have the phone for the next generation. That means this information came from another source. So I put it in single quotation marks, all right? And remember, you can always rewatch re the lessons and try to absorb this rule as much as possible. All right, so at the end of every utterance, at the end of every direct dialogue, we use our capital letter to begin our new sentence, all right? Use paragraph breaks to indicate a change in the speaker. So in dialogue, a new paragraph is used each time there's a change in the speaker. So what I say is written in one line and what Tamika says goes in another line. So each character gets a line for him or herself. This helps with clarity and can eliminate the need to add tags after each line of dialogue. And here is a typical example. All right. So each character gets a line for him or herself. All right. And when in doubt, just simply look it up. The rules for punctuating dialogue are established for the sake of clarity. Follow the rules and you can communicate your message clearly to your teacher. And just write, write, write. Just practice, practice, practice until you become a great storyteller. All right? Remember, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. And that's from Thomas Edison. Believe you can. If you believe it, you can achieve it. That's all the time that we have for today. But join us again tomorrow for more math and English lessons. Pleasant viewing. Stay in and do stay safe.